Alex, are you ready for your first Caruso lesson? I'm ready, Julie. Excellent. Let's start from the top, the mm -hmm. six notes. It's the most basic Caruso exercise. It helps achieve good balance with the chops, the air, the time, and a steady blow. So let's begin by having you just play a middle C. We're gonna do version one first. Go ahead and just get the taste of a middle C. Excellent. Now before you start any Caruso exercise, I want you to establish one measure of subdivided time. I'd like you to tap your foot, exactly, and get ready, set to play, so that by the fourth beat, we're all ready to play. Okay. Alrighty? Let's try the six notes together, and we'll do version one. After all, this is the first thing I play every day. We're gonna give ourselves those four subdivided beats. We'll breathe on three, four, We'll subdivide on the fourth beat of the rest. We'll use a continuous airstream as always, a constant blow so the lips can ride on the air. We'll leave the mouthpiece in place in the rests. We'll breathe through our noses as a result. And we'll use subdivision before there's action, before we start the note, before we tongue a note, and before we end. Got it? Got it. All right. One and two. <laughs>
Excellent. I love starting with this. And I noticed you had a little chip on one of your notes. And then what did you do to make sure the next one was even better? I increased my feeling of the time. Good, good job, good job. So anytime there's a little scratch or a little clamp, don't stop. Just make sure the next time you're more in the groove of the precision timing. One of the great things about subdivision is that it occupies your mind. And the mind is a busy place. The Buddhists call it a monkey mind. It can go everywhere. If it goes everywhere while you're performing the French horn, which is a high wire stunt act, then you get into some trouble. So one of the beauties of subdivision is to keep the mind completely occupied. Make sense? It makes sense to me, Julie. And not only that, it gives the muscles exactly the information they need to move with ease. I start all of my horn classes at Juilliard with a group six notes. That way we're all on the same page with our timing, our breathing, our sounds. And in fact, I do encourage listening. There's some controversy about that. In the olden days, when Carmine taught this to injured players, he would say, don't listen. And he'd even say, keep your embouchure very firm in between. And I have to admit, I've modified that somewhat. I think at the level of the students that I work with, and the level that I play at, and the level that you're at, I encourage you to listen. I don't want you to correct. I just want you to listen. Pay attention to what's coming out your horn. And as far as keeping the embouchure tightly engaged in between, I don't think we need it. I don't want you moving it. I'd like the lips to stay put. But I don't feel that at this level, we need to keep them firmly engaged. That said, if you're dealing with an embouchure change, or you're teaching a beginner who needs to develop an embouchure, by all means, encourage them to hold everything in place in the rests. So if you've been playing for a while, you don't have to keep your embouchure set between notes. But if you're a beginner, it's a good idea to hold it? Yes, in the corners. You don't have to hold the corners tight as if you're playing. But I do want you to keep the set so that there's no variation for where the mouthpiece is going to be for the next note. It's just a matter of how engaged is that set. Have you any other questions, Alex? Yeah, Julie, what should people do who have trouble breathing through their nose? For example, if they have a cold or a deviated septum. That's right. Breathe through your corners. Again, try not to disturb where the actual mouthpiece sits on your chops, but you feel free to breathe through the corners of your mouth. Great, thanks. So that was the first version of the six notes. And that's the way that Carmine taught it to me many, many years ago. Since that time, Carmine developed variations on all of his exercises, depending on your needs. So let's do a second version of the six notes. This particular version is going to start on a middle G, which is well before any break registers take place for most horn players. In other words, there's no jaw drop at okay. that point. So I'm going to have you start on the middle G, work your way chromatically to the third space C, and here's where the fun starts. From the third space C, I'm going to ask you to maintain the same mouthpiece contact and pressure, but drop down to the middle C as your next note. Now yes, there's a jaw drop, and yes, inside your mouth there's going to be some changes, but I don't want this to be repositioned. And I'd like you to maintain even an equal pressure, particularly taking note of where those teeth are when you drop the jaw, so that they remain aligned and that there's still contact. Questions? Sounds good to me. Pick up your horn and play a middle G just to get the taste of it. Excellent. So four subdivided beats, as always, before you start. Breathing on three, four, with very particular attention to the subdivision on the fourth beat, so you're ready, set to play. Okay. Okay? One and two and three and four and a. Mouthpiece 
this in place, subdivide. <laughs> best to keep the blow steady from beginning to end. Good job. in place, subdivide. Good. Now keep that mouthpiece, notice the contact, and carry it to the middle C. Good job. It doesn't always have to feel great, but it has to be done by the rules. Tempted to replace it and lick your lips, but don't. Good job. This way you iron out your brakes. So the embouchure works more efficiently this way. Beautiful, Alex. Very good job. Let's talk a little bit about this whole activity of going from the third space C down with the same embouchure set. How was that for you? Not comfortable. Uh huh. What was, what was your temptation? My temptation was to take the horn off my face, just as you said, mm -hmm. lick my lips and start over again. Yeah. Bravo for not doing that. <laughs> I know it's so tempting, mm -hmm. but there's so much to be gained by maintaining the same set, the same contact. It'll just make that jaw drop and the transition through the middle to low register that much smoother with less motion. That make sense? Makes sense. So there's other ways to do this. Once you get comfortable with going from the third space C to the middle C, you actually can extend it and go from the third space C to the low G and then back up through the break to the middle G. But I'd highly recommend that you don't take the mouthpiece off and lick your lips as tempting as it is to do. So I applaud you for sticking to it. And I mentioned that it doesn't always sound great or feel great yeah. as long as you're not in pain. No harm will come to you. In fact, perhaps some very, very good things will come so that your embouchure works more effectively and more efficiently. That is a big piece of the Caruso method. The efficiency of the motion makes the music making so much easier.